Hello everyone, welcome to worshiptutorials.com. In this video, we are going to be walking through the guitar parts for the Corey Asbury, the Bethel song, Egypt. Uh, personally, one of my favorites right now, not just because of the guitar parts, but I just really appreciate the Old Testament reference and how the exact same thing can apply to us in a more general, spiritual sense. Israelites obviously are talking about uh, in that story, it's a literal sense that like God led them out of Egypt. We all have a spiritual Egypt. And so if you have not heard this song or if you are not doing this song yet, you need to or at least suggest it kindly to your worship leader. Second thing, as always, when we break down guitar parts in these videos, even if you are not playing this song, I really think that watching uh, this approach to learning parts will be beneficial to you. At least see um, how somebody else may be pulls apart a song and it could help you apply the same idea to other songs. So with that, let's get started. Uh, today we're just running our Jennings, beautiful guitar into an Axe FX3, and we are going to be walking through some general ideas of the effects as we hit each part. So the song is originally recorded in the key of G sharp. I'm putting a cape on the first fret because, and we'll get into this in a second, most especially in the verses, you're playing, you're picking through chords, and it's real important to have that sound. Um, and so if you are doing this in another key, you may find this at G flat. G sharp's a little too high anyway, so you just take your capo off, do it in G. There you go. So this will apply as well if you're doing that. The fret numbers obviously won't, but we're going to be talking about it like this. And if you learn it in this way, you just take the capo off and you're good to go. So we're going to start with the basic E minor shape. You probably learned it this way when you first started to learn to play guitar anyways. But we're not playing the full chord. Personally, for me, it's a little easier to hit this because the root of an E minor is actually your open E. And so that's a little bizarre for me. So for my brain, I'm just going to pick on the full E minor. You'll see what I mean when we switch. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit the E string, and then we're gonna hit the D string, and then the B string to the G string. So, that's the pattern the whole time. Basically, root note, and then D string, B string, G string. So when we get to the C, you're gonna hit the root note, which is the C, well, C sharp, right? On the A string, same pattern. So D string, well, root note, D string, B string, G string. Now we're going to do a G. You just need to hit the G. There's that. And then we're going to do this C shape to play a D chord. So here's your C chord. Just scoot it up two frets. It's a D. You can use that in any other song too. F free with this lesson. There you go. Follow the same picking pattern. Root. But there's this hammer on, it's really cool. So A string, D string, B string, pull off on the B string, so. And then we're gonna drop to the second fret on the G string to get that. Here's the whole thing in context. So, whole thing. There you go. So you're gonna play that through the verse. Um, as we get closer to the chorus, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to hang out on that five and not going to do this pickup because we're going to suspend it. All we're going to do is if you got this here, we're just going to drop our pinky on the D string directly below where our third finger is, our ring finger. Let's talk about effects. Um, really for this song, I don't think there's anything too crazy and specific. Uh, I would suggest a small verb and a big verb. I would use the smaller verb on the rhythmic parts you're doing. I would use the bigger verb for the lead parts. And for that, I would mean more like the chorus is the bigger parts. I would use the bigger verb. If you're gonna do the cool little uh, that's more of the lead. When we get to the, the cool rhythmic thing in the... That part, I would personally use a smaller verb there too. I think you want it to kind of stick out a little bit. It's a little more rocking. Um, but for this specific part, you want to do some chorus. And 
and as clean as you can get. So I wouldn't do the bridge pickup like I just did. Personally, you could get by with just a dotted eighth note delay. That's what I think. I, there's not nothing in this song that is super over the top effect wise. The parts speak for themselves. You're gonna need at least a clean tone and like two overdriven stages. One and maybe you want to stack them together. Um, but for the first verse, I would suggest some verb, a dotted eighth delay, and the chorus. So, coming out of that verse, we go into the chorus. Now, the choruses, the parts are exactly the same. The first chorus, it's a little more laid back. You could do whatever you see fit. We're gonna keep this a little more streamlined and to show you what the part is for the chorus. I would suggest in that instance that you switch, at least for the first chorus, maybe keep it a little cleaner this time around and at least not a more at least not using a delay that's super prominent. You may want to still put a drive on there. I think that helps with the sustain because the part is some single note stuff. Add some nice texture. It's not necessary, but we'll walk through that right now. So my big mantra, I say it all the time, learn everything in shapes, and scales and patterns that you know, because then when you are trying to change keys first off, it makes things a little easier. And then also when you do a song and you haven't done it in six, eight weeks, you can get a little bit of a head start because you remember the shapes, the method, the pattern, whatever that you learned this in. So for example, this song is in the key of G sharp. I've also done it in the key of C. And so when I did it that way, we had a female lead it. I knew the parts and the shapes that I use and I just shifted it down, played through it a couple, like one time through and just kind of had to fumble over my fingers just for a little bit to kind of remember where I was going. Cause a lot of times you get to muscle memory and that's great because it helps you play, but it also sometimes can be detrimental when you're trying to move shapes. So I just played it, remembered my shapes, shifted it down. We were good to go. So there's like this little pickup kind of melody. You're the God on the one is what happens there. So we're gonna, what we got here is on the B string and on the E string, we're in our pentatonic. We're really not gonna be using more than two or three strings for this riff though. So again, relative to the capo, uh, we're gonna go 12th fret, 15th fret, 12th fret again on the E string. First chorus, let it ring there maybe. And then 15th on the E string, 15th on the B string. And we're gonna do this cool little hammer on thing. Sounds kind of country, I like it, in all the right ways. I'm not really a country fan, but I'd allow that. So basically, if you're gonna look at your box, your box is these four frets for the pentatonic. 12, 13, 14, and 15 are your four frets. Basically, we're gonna go to the 14th fret on the G string and we're gonna slide up to the 16th. To the 15th on the B. Slide back down. And we're gonna do this. Do the same kind of thing again. And repeat it again. But basically when we do the second chorus and the choruses for the rest of the song, we want to be hitting on eighth notes for the most part. So if it's in between switching notes, you're gonna just keep hitting. So for any of the other choruses minus the first one, we're basically gonna be hitting a note on the eighth note if we're staying on that note until we switch uh, the next one, which I'll show you just like this. So just keep it going, and the reason, to me at least, is that it creates a little more energy and it kind of fits what's going on. Your other guitar player may be playing chords, and if you're the only guitar player, I think if you're using a keys player and you're using the track for the song, uh, those synths in the song can make it a little bigger too. And so the guitar, you can really save for the big moments in the song. So 
for that instance, I would say you want a bigger verb. I think the you really could be just fine with the dotted eighth delay. If you have the ability to use a dual delay, that sounds cool. I would use some sort of drive, more like a a medium, not nothing light, nothing heavy. And you know, when we got everything on it, it sounds like this. <laughs> So after we come out of that, we basically want to sit on a one for the swell breaks out of that as we right before we go into this little riff part in the bridge. What I like to do, because again, I like to save my chords for when I really mean it. Once you come out of that chorus and you got you can use the same sound you already have, I would say, let's just do like a D shape to capture the one, in this case a G sharp. I would do this. Just to save the big part of what you mean to do, because if you do a full on chord, you're then gonna drop to this riff and it's it'll feel a little emptier. We're basing this D chord on the eighth, seventh and eighth frets. On the B string, you wanna be on the eighth fret. Just play a D chord. Here's your D here. Just go up to the eighth fret relative to the capo. And I would just do that, swell on it, and let it sit there until you hop into this next riff, which is again based in a scale. It follows a really simple and easy pattern. When we get to this little riff section in the bridge, or right before the bridge, and it goes all the way through the bridge, um, I like to use the G, the G sharp major scale. I like to use the major scale as my shape. So if I move it, like I was talking about, I have the general idea of how to play it, just gotta reshift to where I'm at. So it's got this kind of washy kind of feel and the rhythm is like this. If you kind of get that idea, it's also kind of, the drums are kind of syncopating with it too. Uh, it's really cool, feels really good. For some reason, it makes me think of The Office. I don't know why, but it does, The Office theme, but I like it. So what we're gonna do is basically, on the D string and the A string, we're using notes on the fifth fret and the second fret. And then on the E string, we're using notes on the third fret and the fifth fret. And we're landing on the one. So we're gonna go like this. tones. We really only hang out on three notes and we go back and forth and then we land on the G sharp. So when you play that riff, just do it real slow, break it down, get used to it, follow the rhythm, get the rhythm in your head, hear the melody, and we just play it uh, up to speed with, like I was saying, I would use a light verb and if you really want to use delay, I think pulling delay off every now and again is just fine. A little overdrive so it rocks out a little bit. Like that. Now there is this little riff that you hear, which is kind of just a, a little bit of a walk down. So you're gonna start with the 15th fret on the E string, drop to the 15th fret on the B string, go to the 13th fret on the B string, and then the 12th fret. So. You hear it like every other pass through the riff, and it actually, if you look on multi-tracks or in the, in the multi-track itself, that little part, it's its own guitar. So if you have two guitars, you may want to have that guy do it, and then you keep playing that riff, uh, the lower riff. I've tried two different ways. I've tried ignoring that high riff and just playing this really meaty meaty thing and doing that but I've also tried like trying to do both and it's kind of weird I 
I just, it's a lot of back and forth. I don't think the ROI, uh, the return on investment, if you will, is worth it. I think just sticking to that big meaty part is really all that's necessary. But if you got another guy, do that. Or maybe the other guy wants to play the exact same thing, but maybe an octave higher. There's lots of cool things you could do. But that's basically it. Now this video may have taken longer, way longer to record than this video is long on YouTube. But this song is fairly straightforward. The, the parts are pretty cool. Again, I could just run, run through right now how you're playing these parts. Your verse parts are basically some chords with a strategic string skipping system. That's a little bit of a tongue twister there, Brian. The, the strategery. Your choruses are, at least the first chorus is a little bit of a slower interpretation of the riff, but the other choruses are just based around your pentatonic minors, in this case, uh, it is going to be E sharp or F. E sharp is what we're actually playing in the key of G sharp. E sharp minor pentatonic scale. And then your riff in the bridge, right before the bridge, all of that, is basically you're pulling it out of the G sharp major scale. So if you remember those things, basically you don't even have to remember the, the key part necessarily. Just remember where the parts are sitting and you can shift this around to your heart's content. So that is it for today. Thank you for joining us. We will see you in the next one.